So if you remember, with developing new technology, um, anytime an engineer develops new technology, they have to kind of go through that engineering design process. And if you look at your paper at the very top of that, you see I kind of have that boxed off, the engineering design process. And so the first step, kind of like the scientific method that we go through, is the first step is you have to identify a problem. And then after that, once you identify a problem or a need or something like that, then you design a solution. That's what engineers do. They design solutions. So looking at the second step there, you see it boxed off on your paper? Then what do, we, what do they do? Evaluate results. And every single lab, or most labs that we've done in here, when we've built something, when we've, when we've made something in class and we go through the scientific method, man, we go and we evaluate our results, right? And that's kind of part of the scientific method too. So they're very similar. Engineering design process, scientific method, they have some similar, some similar steps to them. Primarily so direct instruction is, I try to use it very little. I, and obviously there are going to be times when, when I have to you know, to, to lecture, but I try to, I try to use those times to model a lot of what I want the students to do. If you remember, on Friday, if you were here, we sketched a model drawing of what you thought, what, what, what you kind of thought a balloon jousting balloon should look like. And so, um, when we joust these balloons, we're going to go through the engineering design process. Now, can I borrow you, Alex, one more time? Uh, for the active instruction, I start off with modeling and I try to scaffold that into, into the active where um, I give them just enough information a lot of times, especially with labs. Alex and I are jousting. If you remember the balloon rockets, we weren't competing against another balloon. We were just on a string with our little straw piece. And as we have potential energy filled up into the balloon right here, when we release that kinetic energy, which is energy in motion, travels, 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 boom, 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 boom. But here's where the jousting part comes in, and this is where the big challenge is going to take place. Okay, so we have these bamboo skewers, and so Friday, if you remember, we kind of drew a sketch of where would the best placement of these go if we were trying to battle against another balloon. I try to give them just enough information to get them started. And I want them to try to work through um, some of the struggles of the lesson. You know, I want them to, to explore uh, some different possibilities to, to get to a solution uh, throughout the class. So maybe you got to move the straw back. I try to use that time to, um, to let the students self-reflect um, throughout the lesson. Remember, you're testing with the straw first. Testing with the straw first. No bamboo skewers yet. So you've had success how many times? Three times. Throughout labs, through active instruction, um, students are able to get immediate results. Good. Woo. Oh, that's <laughs> Balloons are crazy, aren't they, Maddie? Balloons are a little crazy. Good, you got it? Man, you're, you're ready to roll. Find your string. They're able to get the results and evaluate those results. As you see what happened, do you think you need to move your straw or do you just think it just got caught and just got unlucky that one time? And so as you saw in today's lesson, they took that evaluation of their work and their effort to go back and make modifications to that. You learn from your mistakes and learn it. That's exactly right, Noah. Good job, buddy. All right, Gracie, it's your turn. It's definitely okay to make mistakes and to learn from those and to grow from those and to, to make their work uh, much better than it would have been had they not had that opportunity to um, self-assess uh, throughout the lessons. I try to put as much on the students to, um, to use that self-assessment more so than me just showing them here's the solution for that. I want them to explore and that's, that's the joy of teaching science, you know, to get them to explore that. <laughs> The work products that I enjoy using uh, for the students are the ones where they are responsible for the majority of the work. I like to get them started and so um, today's lesson I started them out with a question slash problem which is the first step of the scientific method. You know you always start off with a question or a problem and then when you get to the hypothesis the students then can start to internalize can I make this work? You know that, that process, uh, that thinking process or thought process begins to take place and so uh, they begin to um, kind of assess themselves to see if this is something that they feel confident in doing um, or, or not. All right, so what do you think happened? Okay, so I think you need to make it. 
So what do you think happened? Why did it not go nine well, inches? The straw. Maybe in the wrong place, you think? Maybe the thrust is not pushing it even with... That's right. That's right. Good job. Good job. All right, so again, just like an engineer, man, just go back to that step two, redesign. But it's interesting to, to see the, the finished products that students come up with and the solutions of how they solved certain problems, you know, in, in class and how they came up with that solution. Um, sometimes it, it, they, they received help from a partner, um, a lab partner. Um, sometimes they, they solve it on their own. Sometimes, you know, they need a little bit of guidance along the way, but the, the finished product um, that, I, that I enjoy using are products that, uh, that are mainly self-driven by the students. Ready, one, two, three, race! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. About eight feet. 